Okay, so we're updating this here HTML. Hopefully, it didn't remove anything necessary from all the drop downs. Yeah, we it's uh, 16 channels. We have uh, that many wavelet types that we can use. The wavelet denoising doesn't actually do much at the moment, but we'll probably check it in another tool. We're just rearranging the HTML, the different sections in it. Uh, let's see. So we have the main container. Yeah, it's starting from here. I'll just make this one. Going all the way. What just happened? Yeah, plots. Should include plots and everything. Oh, come on. It's something jumpy. Something is jumpy. It should be the next section. It's got the 208 lines. Let's test the okay. The scroll is still outside the boundary of the page. Why? Okay, I have to check the styling as well. Yeah, we're definitely not doing the navigation bar and styling in here. We have the HTML for this. Okay, it's looking better, but where are the charts? Did I just have charts a second ago? The charts are missing, charts are missing. A band listener, so there's a JavaScript. script. Well, right, because we changed. What if we just pop the JavaScript code? It should, in theory. No, it did not. Yes, sometimes I find the GPT-4, the legacy, model is performing a bit better now it's generating very slowly it's not a good sign now it's a bit fast yeah, let's read this quickly this javascript is designed to manage the dynamic interaction and data fetching for an eeg data visualization tool it initializes and sets event listeners for various ui elements like sliders for window size channel selectors and toggles for waveform denoising and detrending Upon user interaction, it constructs requests to a Flask backend to fetch data, which it then displays using Plotly graphs. The script efficiently handles both the raw EEG signal and spectrogram data visualization. It updates these visualizations based on user input, adjusting parameters such as the channel, wavelet type, denoising preferences, and window size. It also dynamically adjusts to the deployment environment by altering API endpoints based on whether the app is running locally or in production. This ensures that the tool is responsive and adaptive, providing real-time insights into EEG data with interactive controls to explore different aspects of the signal. Yeah, so checking if in uh, production or running locally is, is great. Uh, keep that. But uh, we, we just made some changes to the HTML. Uh, so we might need to adjust the JavaScript as well. Can you first describe in uh, text only full sentences, continuous paragraphs about the code? Forgot to mention. Given the recent changes to the HTML structure, it's essential to adjust the JavaScript to match these updates. The JavaScript code is responsible for managing the interactive elements on the page, such as sliders, dropdowns and buttons, and ensuring that the EEG data is fetched and displayed correctly based on user inputs. Key adjustments needed. One, element references. The JavaScript references several HTML elements by their ID attributes. Ensure that these ID values in the JavaScript match those in the updated HTML. For example, the IDs like wavelet denoise, channel selector, file scroller bar, and others should be consistent between the HTML and JavaScript. Two, Event listeners. The script sets up event listeners for user interactions. Given that the HTML structure has been updated, it's crucial to ensure that these event listeners are still correctly targeting the appropriate elements. If any elements were renamed or restructured, update the event listeners accordingly. Three, data fetching logic. The script dynamically builds URLs for fetching data from the server based on user inputs, such as selected wavelet type, channel, and window size. Verify that these parameters are still correctly captured from the HTML elements and passed into the URL. Four, rendering. The code uses Plotly to render the EEG data and spectrogram. 
confirm that the container elements for these plots, raw signal plotly div and spectrogram plotly div, are correctly referenced in the JavaScript and exist in the updated HTML. 5. Initialization and updates. The JavaScript initializes the data fetch and render process on page load. Ensure that this initialization process still correctly interacts with the new HTML structure and that all required elements are properly loaded and accessible when the script runs. In summary, the JavaScript is tightly integrated with the HTML structure. So after making changes to the HTML, it's important to carefully review and update the JavaScript to ensure that all references, event listeners, and data handling logic are correctly aligned with the new structure. So we'll ask it to, I don't know why is it much uh, shorter than we had it before, simplified, optimized, modular. It swears it retains all the functionality. I'm still not seeing the charts. We have a problem actually loading the data. So when I'm trying to scroll JavaScript, the uh, line, line 79 is not remove a bunch of stuff and train frequency scale um yeah where is the frequency scale got rid of it forgot the frequency scale hey can we generate the this uh, html script again from scratch maybe application bar and everything but uh, it's not what we are after choosing to put the and that's probably okay to bring the frequency yes yeah, so it's, it's doing funny business ah did bring did bring frequency scale back but that's not complete i wonder yeah does it hey did you realize there are placeholders can we generate the whole thing and uh, not forget any element when you do that it looks a bit better so we need this class container business we have two sets of controls that's okay plot wrapper yeah channel 7 selected by default that's fine and frequency scale is back which is good because in a previous response it just decided to get rid of it that's not nice is it and we have the eg javascript going on yeah that could be a uh, up there instead of where the description is so content is fine but not taking the whole html just taking this container not the log one should be uh, selected by default. Let's see what the problem might be. Got a bunch of errors. Uh, let's, oops, let's remove this script as well. It's the problem removing stuff in the uh, uh, HTML. That's not fun at all. And we don't care about the logo. Yeah, did it get? read of the local no it's still there so why is this yeah it's not able to get the data we actually want to change it so that the data is available in uh, the front um, front end all the time so we can actually store it as uh, what's happening here that yeah that's Obviously, to do with a recent change, we're getting 500. Get that uh, uh, the API essentially doesn't work. Well, now it does. Uh, it's war. We have the whole. Uh, yeah, but it skips sending uh, data back and forth, which is not ideal. We want to change that. Yeah, because it's becoming quite heavy. Yeah, want this log by default. Uh, okay, this Python code is actually works better, uh, unless you can find some uh, obvious mistakes with it. We would like to use this one. Uh, what you generated last uh, didn't actually load the data properly. 
Now another thing is that the, the tool becomes a bit too heavy at times. So wonder if you can describe in plain text uh, without generating any code yet how it how we can improve the loading time. Uh, currently it's uh, talking to the a server back and forth many times uh, but this is not ideal we might also look into limiting the window size some more uh, because this is what happens when i do we get the following in the terminal so maybe we can improve this somehow and also a minor thing another thing if we're already working on this is that the scale the frequency scale should be logarithmic by default and also fourth thing if we can improve the styling a bit um, somehow making sure that um, the controls are not uh, spread multi over multiple uh, lines we want to keep them intact uh, within the same line so for example the frequency scale and the drop down window should just be all uh, together in one line uh, same with scroll and the actual scroller the text and the scroller should be in one line as well uh, see the image attached and uh, first generate a uh, plain text full sentences complete paragraphs about how you're gonna improve the code and then we will generate the code in the next prompt to improve the loading time and overall performance of your flask based eeg visualization application we can implement several key optimizations one reduce server client communication data preloading load and pre-process the data in larger chunks on the server side so the client doesn't need to request data as frequently batch data requests instead of fetching data every time the user interacts with controls consider loading the entire data set or a significant portion up front the client can then handle local rendering based on user interactions caching use caching mechanisms to store frequently accessed data on the server side to avoid redundant computations Two, limit window size. Dynamic limiting. Impose a maximum window size to prevent overly large data sets from being loaded at once, which could overwhelm the server or client-side rendering. Adaptive loading. Adjust the window size dynamically based on the user's device performance or available resources to ensure smooth operation. Nash 3. Logarithmic frequency scale. Default settings. Set the frequency scale to logarithmic by default in both the back-end processing and front-end controls. This can be hard-coded into the JavaScript and back-end logic to ensure consistency. 4. Optimizing the UI UX. Responsive layout. Ensure that the controls, such as frequency scale, wavelet type, etc., are displayed in line and don't wrap onto multiple lines. This can be achieved by adjusting the CSS, using Flexbox layouts, or setting appropriate widths for each control element. Scroll bar integration. Place the scroll bar on the same line as the label to improve the visual flow of the interface. Adjusting the CSS width properties will keep these elements on one line. Five, minimizing load on the back end. Pre-processing. Perform heavy computations like wavelet transforms and filtering on the server only once or in bulk rather than reprocessing data for each user request. Pre-compute commonly used settings and store them. Asynchronous operations. Use asynchronous processing or background jobs for intensive tasks, allowing the server to handle other requests without delay. By implementing these optimizations, your application should load faster, be more responsive, and offer a better user experience. This approach balances client-side performance with back-end efficiency. In the next step, I'll provide the updated code that incorporates these improvements. So paying for GitHub Copilot, so we might as well uh, use it. Default frequency scale can be changed by, I will do a workspace handle 
use the prompt from GPT-4 in case it's changed both. Yeah, with that handle, it's changing both uh, JavaScript and HTML, which is great. Yes, so this is already working. But then we uh, change the JavaScript as well. Adding this line. We have frequency as default. And I think that it actually stuck uh, GPT-4. Um, we have 4 Omni, whatever 4. 4 O should be better. So let's try regenerating. But what else can we do with GitHub Copilot? Yeah, we can ask about uh, preloading. Preloading data again with the uh, workspace handle see what it says it says it will provide the updated code it seemed to like forgot about it and got some suggestions from copilot that's a lot batch data request that caching mechanism need to make changes to both backend and front end um okay okay this is not what um gpt like the newest model is suggesting so assuming this is not actually being accessed preloaded cache it's not using that function uh yeah don't trust copilot that much but what changes did you actually make we did improvement in the layout yeah the code work looks weird True. Ah, there's something wrong with the JavaScript, isn't it? Yeah, checking if production not that's good. Wait, can you describe the changes and improvements in uh, continuous sentences, full paragraphs, uh, plain text, uh, without any code? Here's an explanation of the changes and improvements made to the JavaScript code for your EEG visualization application. The updated JavaScript optimizes data handling by limiting the window size to a maximum of 30 seconds, which significantly reduces server load and improves performance, particularly with large data sets. The frequency scale for the spectrogram is set to logarithmic by default, providing better visualization of EEG data across different frequency bands. The controls for the application, such as channel selection and window size adjustment, have been redesigned to appear on a single line, making the user interface more intuitive and visually appealing. This helps in preventing the clutter that can occur when controls are spread across multiple lines. To reduce the number of server requests, the script now combines data fetching for the spectrogram and raw signals into a more efficient process. This change minimizes back and forth communication with the server, leading to faster data retrieval and rendering. The initial data fetch is performed as soon as the page loads, ensuring that the user sees relevant data immediately. Additionally, the signal to noise ratio, SNR, and mean square error, MSE, are now displayed with better formatting, making the output more readable and informative. These changes collectively contribute to a smoother, more efficient, and user-friendly experience when working with EEG data visualization. Yeah, there's a problem with the new code. I don't know why. It seemed to be forgetting stuff. I didn't forget to check if we executing locally or in production in JavaScript, so that's good. And the JavaScript as well. Well, obviously there's something uh, wrong with it. Let's try re-generating that. I got a limit. I got a timeout on uh, the legacy model. Like nine minutes, a whopping nine minutes. Okay, the Python code uh, seemed to be too short. It's uh, missing importing some libraries and potentially missing other things. The JavaScript code is also incomplete. Something is wrong with it. Can you double check? Yeah, I might just use... Hey, we'll keep using GitHub Copilot. Uh, 
go that we currently have and let's go currently creating a limit window size done preloading yeah this it just can be when the html is and start a new copilot session uh, we need to select workspace function. I wish there was an option just to always uh, use it. Because uh, that, the one that supposedly, allegedly, uh, allows you to look at the whole, um, all the files that are currently open. So change something in the CSS, controls, flex. Okay, control, scroller, wrapper. Well, label split it up or just integrate wait let's just use the big uh, apply uh, buttons because it should keep what we already got and now it did not well it actually did the job no why it's uh, uh, generated javascript i didn't ask for it no, that should be fine. But we change the styling. It is better. A wavelet in noise should have been selected by default as well. A can wavelet the noise be selected uh, by default as well? Yeah, so this is the interesting this is the interesting bit where so if you do the same prompt, can wavelet get it so we made a mistake. Uh, but if you do the same prompt with a workspace, can wavelet the noise is selected by default? It should also change the JavaScript in theory. Uh, no, it doesn't. A checkbox wavelet the noise checked. And that should work. Uh, yeah, we probably want to do a minimum. Yeah, well, minimum of one second works well. Yeah, we'll do a maximum of 30 seconds. It's refusing to code as being a bit lazy. Uh, that's why we're using the GitHub Copilot instead of... Uh, what do we have? 30, 30 seconds, window size, improve performance, uh, prevent excessive data loading and rendering. That would be nice. Again, let's do it with the workspace. Workspace. We got a good prompt from ChatGPT. Did I just say 30 seconds? Ah, it did do it. It's always tempting to blame the board, and yeah, it's modifying. Yeah, don't don't quite understand how this um links actually work they don't really work we are modifying the window size label to have the maximum value of 30 it should reduce some load i can still hear the cpu gpu going all the fans going size limit dead and no other changes are there control f5 it you can select the uh, think they will be only visible yes yeah, so we have the denoising functionality within the same tool you can select your a uh, wavelet type and see what difference does it make you can even overlay as yeah, so you can see what the uh, different wavelet types are doing can overlay by using the trend the result here is for the denoised stuff so when you untick this well you only get the one uh what just what just happened Skip terminal. uh there's a bug there's a bug bug on that What's up? Would we even be able to reproduce? 
Yes, we are able. <laughs> okay, that's weird. Um, I can't even describe. <laughs> I wish uh, yeah, if G GPT had like a video uh, thingy, then you could uh, just record uh, the video of the error and then hopefully it will be able to tell you how to fix it at the moment. I can't even describe um, what's going on. Essentially, um, yes, if you remove wavelet the noise and the trending uh that's interesting we have logarithmic scale body fold combine control single line we did that did we, we combine controls into single lines and improve the user interface you can adjust the html okay but you're not actually doing anything to the html do you yeah using no wrap uh, let's integrate uh, yeah, this is new for Copilot. The integration. No, that's not good. No, I do want it to wrap. Now I need to improve that. Uh, it that from there. Single fetch, fetch data value, spectrum based on the current channel and time window. We found excessive back and forth communication with the server. And uh, that could be interesting let's do quickly yeah, so with the workspace handle it should just find it's doing a search and finding all the stuff it possibly needs we have 31 lines after integration yep we should have more okay did that ugly color thing but that's fine also making sure that it always fits the screen we like that a lot we love it. Okay, let's try this one as well. Workspace. We're just trying a single fetch for the spectrogram so we don't go back and forth offloading the server. Fetch. And yeah, the links don't work while it's generating, that's okay. As long as they work in general. Sometimes it's uh, removing the links. Uh, okay, so that JavaScript fetch both raw EG and the spectrum of data and say single request. Um, not sh How would we even uh, test if this works better or not? Uh, we can, yeah, have to try applying code block okay did something now this is in python applying code block okay let's assume back in javascript 152 um no 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 won't even work with it yeah what are you doing it was just weird uh, okay, we might leave it at that because we also have to finish soon. Should we deploy now or later? It's always the main question. Actually, happy to deploy. Uh, we will deploy now. Let's see if actually, right, so it updated straight away. Yeah, it's still a bit slowish. Yeah, it's a bit laggy. And it doesn't actually fit into the whole window. Yeah, there's something going on. Uh, I have to test some more. There's this weird bug, but that just makes me think there's other, other things that are not right. 